Hey guys, thank you for joining another episode of the Candy Show. I'm your host, Candy. Guys, guess what? We have some special guests in the building. We actually have the original members of the Candy Internet Talk Show, Fly Girl TW and DJ Silver Fox. So guys, just stay tuned. I hope you enjoy. We got a lot of catching up to do and um, hmm, we'll see what's up next. Go ahead and so since you guys mentioned it earlier, we mentioned again what you got going on. Tell everybody how they could if if you want them to follow you on social media, if you know you have things going on right now and you want them to start following that, let them know. Guys have you both said you got podcasts coming up. So if you want to talk about that now, let them know where they can, you know, access it or just have them follow you and then go from there. Okay. Um, my biggest is our uh, family promise of Greater Indianapolis. Uh, at this time, um, what made family promise, I'll try to make this really quick, uh, so unique is uh, we were, um, we have families that were come into family promise, uh, would take single uh, mothers with children, single dads with children, it doesn't matter, um, couples married or unmarried, or same-sex couples with children that are homeless. Um, they do have to go through, um, you know, um, databases and criminal history and so forth. Uh, cr criminal history does not uh, negate whether you can get into our shelter or not. But uh, one thing we don't tolerate is lying. So you have to tell the truth. If you do have a criminal history, uh, we don't take sexual uh, criminal histories. Uh, but we had churches of the greater Indianapolis that would house the families at night. And then they would be at our day center, which is on uh, 19th and Arsenal, uh, right by St. Rita's Church, where, where the old priest rectory uh, was. That, that's our headquarters. But since COVID, uh, the churches that were housing our families overnight, um, they, you know, they were afraid. So our director developed a housing uh, apartment shelter. So we have 20 families that are in uh, apartments. And when I tell you that Family Promise and the churches that were involved set up apartments, we have Carriage House East and we have New Bridge off of uh, 25th Street. New Bridge, our families with criminal histories have to go there. Carriage House does not take families with, uh, them with criminal history. But we set up full apartments with fully furnished um, bed. I mean, just like an apartment you would want to live in. The churches volunteer. Um, they have everything in the kitchen that they could ever imagine, a colander, everything. Uh, the churches uh, completely supply new dishes, uh, baking dishes. Uh, when a family goes in, if it's a family of four, we, uh, when they go in, it's like a bed and breakfast. Uh, Lee and I and the staff, we make go in, make up the beds. Uh, we put two changes, brand new sheets and blankets in the closets for the families. They have brand new towels and washcloths, uh, everything that they could ever imagine. There are families that, you know, say, say, well, I don't want to go live in carriage house. I had one Caucasian family that says, I, oh, I heard carriage house is the most horrible place. I don't want to move in there, so forth and so on. And I said, baby, you are homeless. You either come off the street or you go live in carriage house. And when they went in carriage house, they were so surprised. Um, they had never had anything like it in their life. So, so um, we're very proud of our uh, shelter, uh, apartment shelter program. And the same with New Bridge. Uh, New Bridge is, is, is not the greatest place. But what I tell my families when they go into the apartments, mind your business mind your business. If you mind your business, other people will mind theirs. Okay, so um, we're very proud of that. I, I just, you would have to go out on uh, family promise of greater Indianapolis uh, com, or you could go to my page, uh, which I, I do run uh, the family promise 
uh, information through Family Promise because you can donate as well as um, uh, we uh, got a family, if you have a family that has babies, we supply them with diapers, diaper wipes every week. Lee and I drop off supplies to the families. Families that don't have a job yet and we, we supply them with two rows of quarters every week for their laundry. Um, most uh, families have already have food assistance, but if you don't even have food assistance, we have um, you know food cards and we get this by, uh, by grants and donations. And when I tell you that um, the uh, Caucasian churches, especially the Presbyterian, the Methodist, and the um, uh, was was Presbyterian. Presbyterian, Methodist, and uh, not us go Baptist. It's, it's only about two two black churches, and most of these churches of a hundred churches are white. Uh, when I tell you that the children for Christmas and the adults have everything that they could ever imagine in life for Christmas, these uh, churches make sure that every family has everything that they ever wanted in life for Christmas. So this ministry, and this is not a job, I, even though I get paid, it's not a job to me. It is such a pleasure for me to uh, work with our families. And the other thing is, I'll send you a link when uh, Chris and uh, company uh, beyond the protest, uh, uh, you know, uh, hits in January because you will be want to be a part of this when we have seen all the protests that we have this year. Now we need to know where we're going to go uh, now that we are beyond this part of the protest, this part of the police shootings, and this part of the, how are we going to change um, Black people going to change our perspective of the way that we see things. Because if Black people ever come together, we will be a force to be reckoned with. And when we begin to spend our Black dollars among each other, we will be uh, a force to be reckoned with. So that's where we're going with that beyond the protest. And uh, most certainly everybody will want to be um, a part of this. So as soon as that launches, I'll be able to send you some information. Like I said, got some good things going on. I can't wait. I'm going to run for a politician of Indianapolis one of these days. I've been, I'm into it that hard, but um, uh, we've got to make, we've got to change things. Only we can change things for each other. We can't expect, expect for um, the white people to change what um, has been done to us over all of these years. We have to do it ourselves. So that's where that's where I am, and we're in my part in the community. I'm all community action. My girl T W. Um, yeah, my my company is No Regular Girl Organization. The website is out there, so noregulargirl.org. And it is, I'm calling it a movement and it's a movement to empower and engage young girls and women to have real conversations about mm -hmm. uh, who we are authentically and just to kind of um, identify our power at a younger age or grab it back as we get older and it's kind of lost. There's a couple of different podcasts that I have coming out and the first one really relates to No Regular Girl and that is You Need to Hear This Sis, that's the name of the podcast. And you can actually go out and listen to the trailer now. It's on Spotify, so you can find that on Spotify. And then also um, the other portion of that is the GIG podcast. And the GIG, the G-I-G stands for Get It Girl. And really what I do talk about that is one of the other things I love is um, helping women in their careers, how to walk into that interview room, owning mm -hmm. the, the, your space, making sure that your resume is perfect, knowing how to overcome poor first impressions. So I have those two podcasts. You need to hear this, sis. And then also the gig. And then I just finished my book that I um, wrote for my granddaughter for Harper. It's called To Harper With Love. Mm -hmm. And it is life lessons from grandmother to her granddaughter. Because, you know, with being ill, you start thinking about, you know, how long you're going to be here. Mm -hmm. And I really mm -hmm. want to make sure that I leave her life lessons, whether I'm here to read those stories or share those experiences with her or not. So I finished that. I just need to identify how I want to publish it. 
So I'll be doing that. And I'm relaunching my travel um, show and it's going to be anywhere plus here. But if you want to check out my over 150 videos, you can do that now by right. logging onto YouTube anywhere but here. And uh, you'll see my face and you'll be able to learn all the things that you didn't know about travel up to this point. And when I relaunch that in January, it will talk about how travel has changed dealing with COVID and how we can move forward. Well, you guys are very, very busy. Lord, how are you going to have time to get on here with this again soon? Organize, organize. Organize. Yes. Organize. I, I, I see I have some emails. I send it to my families because I, uh, I do go in and in, in par, apartment inspections. <laughs> we've had a couple of families that we've had to uh, release from the program. Uh, that destroy a couple of apartments. And then the, the families that are there in our, our homeless shelter from 30 to 90 days, um, they are free, everything. But you have to have a job, you have to find yourself a job and you have to be uh, looking for permanent housing. So with the uh, social workers that we have, we are helping them find it. But I absolutely sent an email yesterday and told them, um, Miss Deb has been sick, but I will be back on doing Zoom inspections. And I do expect to see your clean kitchen, your clean living room, <laughs> dining room, and bedroom and bathroom. So um, once a week, and I said, so, you know, I'll see you this week. So mm -hmm. same business and, and, and uh, community give back is never ending. No. One of the things I just want to add to that, Miss Debbie, is that um, that was the one thing that I had to give up because I was still volunteering at the homeless shelter once a month um, mm -hmm. with the women and children, just mm -hmm. going in there serving meals. And that was one right. thing that I hated to give up for COVID. Um, mm -hmm. And they continued to keep sending me emails. And I think only as of this past month did they actually stop people from coming in and volunteering. Mm -hmm. I just didn't feel like that was safe enough for me or anyone else. So I, I just had to give that piece of it up, but I want to make sure that I get the information as far as that. Cause I, just because I can't be there physically doesn't mean that I right. you know, right. assist right. in other way. So I'm definitely going to look into that, but again, okay. hopefully, you know, and I don't know when I'll, when it's going to be safe for us to get back, but that's definitely something that I'm interested in. And I want to make sure that um you know i stay in touch with you on that okay. tanya tw um i know you did videos you do videos very great you do them very fantastic so is your book does it have anything to do with any visual aids with that like with videos too hmm. like with with harper we mean the one for harper to harper yeah. with love no it's just love it's basically love letters so it's love letters to her um just on on 10 life lessons i want to leave with her so but they're all written to her love letters but it's obviously a book that any parent or grandparent can use um, mm -hmm. for inspiration with having those kind of conversations with their children and then i have a book that i've been working on for 20 years and my goal is to have that um completed by 2021 that you published by 2022 but you know it's all those things you put away years ago and you realize no I want to accomplish this before I go but everything life just got in the way but that book um it it, it really reminds me of what's happening today and, and it's called got till it's gone so I want to finish that by 2021 that will have a lot more colorful <laughs> uh information in it but the one to Harper really is just love letters from me to her well, hopefully we we'll get to Italy like we were supposed to be trying to do next year. Hopefully, we'll yeah, that's get that too. that's the plan for us. Had to push back a cruise, um, so hopefully we'll get to do that in June. No, July for Mom's birthday. But the goal, if we can get to these other countries, is to still go um, in October. I think we push that back to October of next year for um, for Paris and London. But we'll see. We'll see what happens with that. With whatever's going to happen with the world, um, but. Hopefully the travel industry will get back on track because what people don't realize is the countries that we visit need that income. Many of them survive off of tourism. So it's not just about us going, having fun and escaping. It's really about ensuring that these other countries are viable survival. Term, yeah. because it is yeah. about survival for them. So it, it, you know, every dollar we spend there 
goes to them just maintaining. And, you know, there are already quite a lot of them, I wouldn't necessarily say third world countries, but they're clearly doing a lot worse than we are. They're doing so, a lot worse. Yeah, Even so when we went to Puerto Rico, it was, um, but it was uh, tough. we went to Vieques, uh, Puerto Rico, and um, the tourism was down, but it was, I felt safer there than I do here. And yeah. also I, I listened to um, uh, them talk about the tourism in Jerusalem and um, it's, it's zero, it's zero. Yeah. And that was their livelihood. So yeah. a, lot a lot of countries of are doing a lot yeah. worse because of um, lack they of were built tourism. on tourism. So yeah. yeah, so hopefully we'll get back to that, back. even if it's just to make sure that those people and their children can eat and they have protection because the weather will still come. So it's, you know, COVID has done so much, but when you think about Normally, when hurricane season and all those other seasons come around, you already know certain parts of the world are going to be in danger anyway. Right. Imagine right. being in danger and then also not having the normal things you would day to day because tourism is, is what helps you eat. So right. I'm just, I'm praying that, you know, we'll, we'll have some relief. These vaccinations will work. Countries will start to trust us again to come in them. And then we'll be able to, to ensure that community expands beyond Indianapolis, Indiana, and that we can really um, support our other communities through our normal day stuff, you know, shopping and traveling and all of that. Mm -hmm. So I'm just looking forward to a year of progression because I, obviously this 2020 has been a year of reflection. I'll say that. That's right. That's right. Yeah. Well, I do agree, and hopefully one day we'll get out there soon. Uh, I think the traveling industry is probably going to be one of the biggest industries to come back, even though they're saying that it's going to take a couple of years because everybody's going to want to get the freak away from home. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah. Everyone just want to get away. So um, I thank you so much again, guys. I want you all to stay safe as you can. All right. Um, and you too. You know, I definitely will. I haven't been anywhere other than to work. Thank you, Lord, that I still have a job. Um, and just to grocery shopping. And I'm okay with that. As long right. as I you know that I can try to be as safe as possible. And again, have my loved ones safe as possible. Then I'm fine with that. You know, mm -hmm. I'm fine with that. I have no other choice. Yeah. Mm -hmm. right. um, well, thank you. All right. Well, Thank you so much, Miss Debbie, Miss Miss yes. DJ Silver Fox. Can you take us out of here with um, a good positive message? Um, I, I most certainly can. I'm going to um, uh, let me see. Let me see if I can get that right back up real quick. That was one of the things that I know that we we had. Like each one of us came to the table and did something different. Each one of our parts was mm -hmm. so different. And it was, um, so we were like, we depended on certain things, certain people right. doing certain things, you know. Right. So, um, so I'll take us out with, the, with um, one of the last verses to touch somebody's life. Touch somebody's life as you pass them. You may never pass that close again. It's not hard to reach out and love and touch somebody. You'll be surprised how soon that same touch will come back to you. Mm -hmm. And that's what we'll go out on. Well, all right. You. Thank you. I appreciate all right. you guys. Love you all. Love you, too. Love you all. See you again. All right. And now I'm going to go potty. All right. <laughs> Bye. All right. Bye. 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 All right. <laughs>